All right, pull this back up so that we can see. How exciting. It's always fun to get on Facebook Live. It is fun to get on Facebook Live. And then I get my little feed that says, She's Velvet Steel is live. And I'm like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, that's us. That's great. <laughs> well, welcome. Um, I'm assuming we're live. We'll, uh, we'll just, if anybody wants to double check that and let us know. Yeah. Um, we're checking yep. right now. We're there. Awesome. Well, welcome to She's Velvet Steel. You know, this is our coffee talk every Monday and we're super pumped to be able, I don't even know where to look on your computer. Where do I look? Right there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you look at me? Right there. <laughs> um, and I discovered this morning, well, first of all, let's not jump totally in. Reagan, holla. So where are you joining us from, Reagan? Same place you were last week. Absolutely. Messy, dirty home office <laughs> in sunny Southern California. Nice. nice. And Gretchen? I'm not in my car today. Yay. I'm actually um, chilling with my coffee, no makeup, That's bed amazing. head, whatever. I mean. Love it. Love it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you said no makeup. I wanted it like, we're going to keep it real. What else do you not have on today, Gretchen? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I'll keep I'll keep it G-rated. And I and I am going. I'm rocking today in my pajama pants. Her pajama pants. So That's my daughter just told me she's like, "Wow, you're fancy on the top and not on the bottom because nobody sees." I was like, "Exactly." So <laughs> life lesson already taught today. Check. That's the beauty of technology. <laughs> it's yeah. all about being real. Yeah, to a certain degree. <laughs> 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 uh, and Jamie and I are joining you guys together from Billings. So we've been having fun. So right now, let us know where you're joining us from. So type in the comments um, where you're joining us from. It could be hiding in your car. <laughs> you're in. Maybe you have a girlfriend that you guys are huddled up in the corner of the coffee shop listening in. Um, that'd be kind of fun. So just that would be fun. in the comments where you're joining us from. We've got, we got some stuff to talk about today. We got some good yeah. stuff to talk about today. So last week, um, what was, Reagan, what was your favorite part about last week's coffee talk? You're asking Reagan what? to read. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't remember. We said five minutes before we went live. Uh, <laughs> That's Gretchen. Gretchen, back to you. I love that if y'all are on the mailing list, y'all got called an a-hole. <laughs> that was the best. And that shouldn't have been new news. <laughs> I was like, whoa. That's my favorite part. Well, I guess you're going to have to uh, check out the email if you don't know what we're talking about. It's not what you think. So uh, no. definitely check that out. And if you're not getting our emails, drop a one in the comments and we'll make sure that we get you on that list. It's super fun. It's, it's our way of like connecting with you a little bit more personally. Um, we actually take your, we respond to each email that we get back from you guys. And we use your replies in our content, like we, because that's what we're here for. We're not here for just everything that we think you should know. We also want feedback and we'd like to really um, meet you through that and address some of those things, which we've been able to do. So that's kind of fun. And yes, last Sunday, it was a little scandalous. <laughs> I got out of church and I was like, did I just get called an a-hole? <laughs> So funny. Oh, well, I was man. looking at the feed today. I'm like, oh, Queen Esther, she's so soft and a hole right above that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you think, though. This is clean. We're all church girls, right? Mm -hmm. it's not what you mm -hmm. think at all. And it actually is a dirty hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let's get serious. Let's get serious. Okay, so I think. I want to start out with this question. Let's get serious. You guys get serious? Oh, we're ready. Bring it. Bring it. How many days a week do you wear a baseball hat? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she went there. Ow. <laughs> Three? Mm. I'm going to say five. Same five. hat, four days. And then I switch it out one day just to be wow. fancy. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wear my son's crush's gift hat. Oh, you still wear that? 
always. <laughs> it's now mine. And she moved to a new school, so I can actually show up around my kids in it. Um, I wear that probably three times. Three, three times a week. But I wear a headband when it's greasy, too. Like, that works. Like, like underneath the hat, like? No, 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 no. Like, put my hair up on top <laughs> and, like, a headband to cover over any extra grease. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if anybody's with us, or those of you that are with us, I'm curious how many days a week you wear a hat, if you find it as necessary. I found myself this week trying to schedule the different things I need to do according to when I last washed my hair. Am I the only one that <laughs> no, I do the exact same thing? Seriously. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, I have an event or I got something I gotta, I like, I gotta go do, or I'm like, how many days is that going to be before right. I've washed my hair too much dry shampoo? You know, what's, what's the too much dry shampoo when it starts flaking out all the white stuff. Or, yeah. <laughs> that's right. It's, this is a dandruff. This is just my dry shampoo, right? <laughs> <Can I borrow? laughs> yeah. You know what, you know, what's crazy is I feel like I haven't been out like on a girl's night, like a mom's night out. And that's when I fix my hair the best. I do my makeup the best. I put on my cutest clothes. Date nights. I'm just like, let's go simple. I'm almost always wearing a, cow- a cowboy hat. Um, whatever. Right. <laughs> role play. Uh, role play. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Hat. Cowboy hat. <laughs> that it's Montana real now. There we go. <laughs> Giddy up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dang it. Dollar store. <laughs> All right. So let's get into this, you guys. We don't. Yeah. Want to really talk about something that uh, you know we've been talking about it for a few weeks now, and that is this whole notion of the disease to please and the different traps. And you know, it's different for everybody. And if you've been getting the emails and if you've been watching some of the posts that we've had, you can see the different stories that we've experienced. Um, but I we would love to just have a discussion about it, and we really want your guys's help too. So commenting is huge for us on these coffee mm-hmm. talks. Because again, we don't want a monologue. We love the dialogue. We kind of feed off of each other's energy and and life stories. And we just had coffee with the most amazing woman yesterday. And two, three hours, we sat in this restaurant and we heard her story. And I just, I mean, we were crying, we were laughing. And one of the things that was so beautiful, which I love about She's Velvet Steel is, you know, we see the God working on us all the time, right? Or maybe we don't, but we can see God's hand on our life when we look back in the rear view mirror and and go, wow, I've really, I've really come somewhere. Wow. I really haven't gotten anywhere. Um, But when you see his hand on someone else's life, Mm -hmm. it's just Mm -hmm. like this masterpiece that is so powerful. And it's like a, it's a power source that you can go. I want to plug into that. Like it's so hard for me to see God's handprint on me um like when you run into somebody at the store and their kids have just grown so big your kids are growing too but there's just like whoa your kids are so big it's the Mm -hmm. same thing where you see God's handprint on someone else's life and it's like oh Mm -hmm. my gosh he is amazing yeah yeah and so powerful so um this whole notion of avoiding conflict as being um a little bit of a, a chapter in there with the disease to please do you avoid conflict Jamie no, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of known as like, I like to clear elephants out of the room. If it's awkward, I'm going to deal with it. So, or if I feel like you're misinterpreting, I'm going to, you know, like just to clarify. So no, I don't avoid conflict. I'm, I'm sure that there have been seasons and times. I just haven't thought about this morning. <laughs> Gretchen, what about you? You tend to avoid conflict? Um, I used to be. Honestly, I used to be that girl that would be like, I just want everybody to be happy and I don't want to argue about this stuff. And even including in my marriage, when my husband and I were first married and we always preface our marriage conversations in She's Velvet Steel by like, hey, our husbands know, like we've talked about this. So it's not like my husband isn't aware that this conversation is happening. But yeah, in the very beginning of our marriage, it was, I always wanted to like be that wife that was making my husband happy. And when I started to break into having crucial conversations and not being afraid of it, uh, made my life so much easier. And yeah, you can lose some friends and things like that, but it, it just, you know, with time you get better at that conversation and Oh, there's my son. That, that's real. That's, that's real life right now, guys. Sorry. Hey, at least he has clothes on. Yeah. <laughs> real life. You know what I'm saying? 
Well, and I think for me with conflict avoidance, it's just the older I get, it just prefaces like, what do I really care about? Like, I think if I said I was a conflict avoider, like I probably have my sisters like in the comments here, or anybody that knows me like, what are you kidding me? But at the same time, like I realized like, I don't really care about some things. You want, you don't want to brush your hair for this entire week. You want to wear dirty clothes to church. I don't care. Like I literally like at this point, like there's certain conflicts with my kids, especially that I'm kind of like, I don't even care. Like, I've got so many other things that I feel like I'm constantly having like things with them or even with my husband. Like I think the later on we've gotten in our marriage, like the stuff that would have bugged us before is like not worth it. Not worth the two hours of silence to the angry looks to the awkward going to bed at night where you lay still and hope they know how mad you are, you know? So yeah, I think I've, I, I have levels of conflict now. Right. You know? Well, and I think about that girl that, um, you know, I, I, in her life and in all of her relationships, she doesn't want to truly be true to herself. And she always wants to kind of become who that, when she's around somebody, I'm going to become who Jamie, I think Jamie wants me to be mm -hmm. around this other person. I'm going to become who they want me to be. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I remember in high school, you know, and we could say, oh, that's high school. It's, it's mm -hmm. actually 40 year old women, <laughs> but it does the root, I think starts in high school too, of just, gosh, I don't fit in with the jocks. I don't fit in with the cool I don't fit in with, you know, whoever. So I'm going to go fit in with that, you know, the people that accept me or whatever. And now I'm going to morph and see who they are. So what was the Julie Roberts? I think it is. Reagan might know this. Isn't it the oh. run of ride where the Julia Roberts like has her eggs the way that her boyfriend has it? So if the boyfriend likes scrambled, she likes scrambled. If he's, you know, over easy, that's it. She doesn't even remember what she would prefer anymore right. because she's just molded herself to to just be the easy going oh sure let's just do what you want right which then leaves her in a place of a loss really a loss mm -hmm. of identity and a loss of opportunity in that relationship to have a, a great connection right um so I think you know Reagan you were saying you definitely I was listening to you and I'm going I think yes I mean everyone gets to a place where there's certain things that we just mm -hmm. aren't worth the fight for right. us but I think sometimes um even that can be, let's just keep it peace because it's easier. Absolutely. Right. Or let's just keep the peace or, yep, I'm just going to go with that because um, that person tends to be a little more opinionated and I'm just going to mold to them, which is okay in some sense. But as we were talking this morning, it just depends on what motive you're coming from. Um, and, and I had a girlfriend that just moved still here in Southern California and just moved cities. And I was even talking to her about it. Like, so now she's, you know, you know, in Southern California, if you literally don't live in the same city, we're not going to see you. All right. Nobody wants to send traffic for 30 minutes to go five miles. So move city. So it's different schools for kids, different moms programs, all this stuff. And it's like, part of it was just for her. It's like, she's like, I get a fresh start. I can be whoever I want to be, which sounds crazy. Cause we're not like teenagers. We are grown women, but we all kind of feel like that. We sometimes get ourselves like, go into a group and we're like, Oh, I just want to like, you know, be the one. But before you know it, we're going along with stuff that honestly, you know what, like I said, the other time it's like, I just don't enjoy cooking. So I don't want to make you a meal, but you know what? I will order you pizza. I will, you know, maybe watch your kids for an hour. Or I'll pay for a babysitter to come to your house to babysit your kids. Like that to me is still, but I'm like, Oh no, the thing to do that everybody's doing is making meals. The thing to do is to, you know, we got to create some crafty thing and I need to come up with my own at home camp for my kids. So we're just kind of like molding into the group of people that we're with. So right. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I feel like that is a real struggle that even now as adults, we're still dealing with. Well, the consequences are so, um, they run deep. So if it starts out in high school and you're, you know, you're always trying to figure out, oh, I don't want to get those people. I mean, I've seen it in women <clears throat> in their thirties, you know, twenties, thirties, forties, maybe you're the type of person that you want to please your parents and you end up getting pregnant. You don't, um, you know, you don't want to tell your parents. So then you start well, lies. I feel like that disease to please and avoiding conflict is like, 
it starts the layer of lies. And then it becomes the layer of lies and you start to, you become this person that's just screaming inside. Nobody else's fault that you chose not to be authentic with who you are. Mm -hmm. Um, And you're kind of mad at everybody else, but you're the one that chose to not be who you are decade after decade after decade. And And let's be honest, for what aim? Why are we doing that? Maybe it's because it just makes it easier, but, but really I think we can think that it is for them, you know, kind of the idea we've, we've discussed this line, confusing the call to love right. with the mm-hmm. disease, please. I think we can think I'm the, the giving I'm preferring other people. I am, you know, loving on people by taking care of their needs and doing the things that, that would please them. But is that really the aim? Right. Because that would, that would insinuate that that's a choice that you're making. Right. Whereas the disease to please is an obligation. You feel guilty. You feel forced. You feel like if I don't, then there's a consequence. Right. Um, that's no longer a choice that's driven out of fear. So the aim there is really to please them so that you feel better. You feel you are good. You feel Absolutely. like, um, I'm a good person. You feel like I'm lovable, right? Because now they appreciate me. And like Jen said, what happens when you give, 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 and they don't appreciate you? So like then that you're bitterness. like, that person sucks, you know, yeah. um, you, you have like a secret motive of I'm going to give to you and I'm going to be really loving and prefer you, but please tell me that that makes me awesome. You know, because if you don't tell me that the problem, I may become passive aggressive, you know, what is the aim behind hashtag the, truth bomb, <laughs> the disease, right? Drop a two, drop a two if this resonates with you, if if this is you, if you're bold enough to be authentic, because I think it's more common than oh yeah. I mean admit. We can cover it over and sound really sweet, especially if you're a wordsmith like myself, where you can make every argument sound right. (laughs) My husband, (laughs) I don't even want to go there. Quit making yourself sound right because you're so wrong. Right. Thank you. Yeah, one for me. Yeah. I'll make sure he watches. <laughs> but it's, it, I think it's a scary trap because what happens is decade after decade, um, you, you have, maybe it's a personality thing. It starts out with like, oh, that upset my parents or that upset my siblings or that upset my teacher. I don't want to do that again. So I'm just going to keep going with the flow. And then you get into your twenties and it's like, oh, um, he wants to do that. Okay. I'll do that. And, and you're consistently not true to yourself. You're consistently <laughs> stuffing down who you are, um, you set in a wave of habits that are really hard to break. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, a parent, and then it's, you know, like it just, it is so much more dangerous than I think we realize. And, and you said something before we even got on, you mentioned inauthentic relationships and like, I'm sure Gretchen, you know, you feel the same way. I mean, all of us do, but It's like, that's really like, if in a nutshell, like that's what it comes to inauthentic relationships because you, you haven't been yourself and, and you want, like, I think what we all crave in ourselves is to be loved, but I don't want to be loved for who you, who I've made myself be around you. So for who you think I am, am, I want to be loved for who I really am. Cause those are like the friends, the people, the family. And I mean, this is like, even within your own family, I mean, to this day, my mother-in-law, it's like, you know, I was me and that was, I was getting zero love for that. And yeah. now I'm being who she wants me to be because I only have to see her once or twice a year. She's not on Facebook. That's I was going to say, I take it she's not on Facebook. <laughs> I know. But, but I mean, you know, like I just take her to where she's at and I'm like, you know what? For the one time a year that I see you, I'm going to be how you makes you feel most comfortable, makes you feel, you know, whatever. And I mean, that is kind of fake in a way, but it's like after you try and try and try with a certain relationship to be, you know, and marriage, it gets tough because if you do that over and over in your marriage, those are the people that down the road, you're like, how have you been married 20 years? And now you're getting divorced. And you said, you've never been happy, but you always seem happy. It's like, there's something inside them. So I don't know. What do you think, Gretchen? I know you always add something with inauthenticity. Real. Yeah. Here's, here's my thing on inauthenticity. I don't do it. I just don't do it at all. Um, I can smell it a mile away. And because I used to be that person that would 
be wanting to like, please, whether it was a teacher, I lived in a very performance driven um, life, both in like the sports arena, as well as college and through my work that it eventually trickled into my marriage. And I just got real with it. And even with like friends, I've lost friends over the years because I'm just at a point in my life where God has called me to a certain thing. God has brought me up to a certain level. And I even read an article this morning that was talking about, you know, some of the things that you regret in life. And one of the things was the friendships that you hang on to that you're forcing to try to stay together. The relationships that you're trying to force mm -hmm. to stay together literally end up being a regret way down the road. And I just don't, I don't have room for that in my life. And I think that we are kidding ourselves when we think that we do, or that somehow we've got to force something to work when, if that's not how God designed it, like you got to let that go. I mean, you legitimately, it, it's okay for people to, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, it's okay for people to grow apart. Now I'm not talking about marriage. That's a whole nother thing. Right. You got to work at your marriage. And I will preach yep. that all day long. Like your marriage is an investment next to your relationship with Jesus. If you are not investing in your marriage, that's on you. It takes work. And through that, and my husband and I have worked and I am flat out honest and say that my husband and I have been through years of counseling. And a lot of it was because of me and God bless his soul <laughs> for putting up with my array of personalities, but <laughs> we all like, have a we, couple. <laughs> we, we work at our marriage. We legitimately have to make an intentional move to work at our marriage day in and day out, because that is an investment aside from my relationship with Jesus that trumps everything else. And as I bring other people into my life, if you are authentic, like I, I want that in my inner circle. I don't want people who are going to be fake. I want people that are like Gretchen, this addiction is breaking me right now. I need help or Gretchen. I'm struggling with whatever, fill in the blank. Like, don't tell me that your life is, is, all good because everybody's got something mm. and there's always a chapter in somebody's book. They ain't nobody reading, but it's like, we need to bust those chapters out because that's exactly what the enemy wants to hide. He doesn't right. want you reading that chapter or sharing it because that's your story. Right. So can I say this too? <clears throat> I was thinking about this with Reagan mentioning the mother-in-law with you about your relationship with your husband and Jesus mm -hmm. trumps everything. Mm -hmm. Can I say that when we then make our effort and our energy and our focus and our time and our heart and our soul to please other people. Can I say then that just like we talked about with our schedule, that when you say yes to one thing, you're going to say no to something else. If you're going to put all your focus into making someone else happy, be it your boss, because right. you need to earn their position or earn your, their respect or your mm -hmm. place with them, or be it your mom, your own mom, or maybe it's the mother-in-law, someone's going to pay. And so I was thinking about with Reagan and, and her, I mean, not necessarily in her situation, but I was thinking in our effort to please our mom, we may displease our husband. And you just said you have your, your priorities and your values in this order, Jesus, my husband. So we should never be in a position or a place where we are devoting all of ourselves to another relationship, um, pleasing them to right. where it then. So I remind, I was telling you, it reminds me of Bruce almighty, where he thinks that he just doesn't get why God says no to some things and yes to other things. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. And so he lets him be God, you know, like here, have my powers. You, you go for it. And, um, he, then he's, he kind of figures out along the line, if I help the people that are praying for the Mariners to win and I make the Mariners win, then the people that were praying for the other team to win lose, you know? So it's the same thing. If I'm like doing everything to make my mom happy, then that may not be the right thing for my family. Right. You know, and I think that that's part of the losses that you will accrue when you have this habit of pleasing. Right. Yeah. And I'm not, I think that it's, it's also fair to say, like, I don't want to, I don't want to say that like, I have it all together because I don't, it's a constant journey and I'm always having to refine, you know, my, my ability to have relationships with people because they really are a true investment. And I think we also live in a day and age where it's like, if you have 2,700 friends on Facebook, like, are those really your friends? Come on. I mean, what? it's, it's not about like, how? Oh, sorry okay. to break it to you, Reagan. Like, no, but I mean, like, we, get so, we get like so caught up in like, I, somebody told me, I can't even remember who it was, but like somebody came 
and talked to me or asked me a question the other day. And it was a guy actually. So this wasn't even a girl. And he was like, you have so many followers on Instagram. And I'm like, why does that even matter? Like, who cares? Those are not like my real friends. Like real friends are going to tell you or, you know, people in your life, real relationships, they're going to tell you what you need to hear when you need to hear it most because they care enough about you to deliver the message. Let me and- ask, let me ask this. Let me put this out here on this whole disease to please. And, um, you know, not wanting to disappoint people and things like that. If you, if you're in a position and your particular relationship is the opposite side where you're not necessarily the one that's wanting to constantly please, but you're the one that maybe is in a position of authority. Maybe you are a mentor to somebody or they look up to you. You don't even want them to look up to you, but they do look, (laughs) you know, that kind of thing. Like, um, people put us in places that we don't even know we're sitting. Our kids Um, or (laughs) go deeper. (laughs) I don't think my kids put me up on an authority. I don't think I have any authority with them. (laughs) No. Um, but you know, the whole interaction of realizing they are striving to please you they're not really being authentic with who they are and, and they're striving to please you. They're working for you. They want to, they want you to um, affirm them and acknowledge them. And, and this, this whole, I'm, I'm where I'm getting at is this whole disease to please on both sides is it's such an infection. Like it's, it's like a poison that will just kind of come out because you cannot have an authentic relationship with somebody if either side is so bent on pleasing one side. Yeah. I think that then too, I mean, I think I not necessarily an authority, but I've had some relationships where they felt like they knew what I wanted all the time. And so they would kind of feed that. And I always felt like, is that what you, I mean, is that what you want? Like Claire, I told you about the elephant in the room. Like I, do you want to do that? Or are you saying you want to do that because I want to do that? Like, stop it. You know, like just say what you want to do, you know, we can compromise, but don't tell me that you want to. So, because I think what happens is it causes frustration for me. Cause I'm like, I don't just say what you want, you know, and I know what you want, what you really, really want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. (laughs) I I don't (laughs) want, I don't want passive. That was so good. Um, and like we planned our denim today too. I love it. We did it. Um, so anyway. (laughs) It's as if though that they, they become passive aggressive, like they do that for too long. And then they want to try and hint at what they want. And you should just know what they want. And then there's this like eh, tension and it's just on the mm-hmm. other end of it, like being pleased is not as appealing as we think it is when we're trying to please. Right. Word. That doesn't sound too bad, to be honest. I want somebody to I know. Try well, I did tell me. Nobody's my doing this crap for me. All right. Nobody's out there trying to get my favor. I don't know. What am I doing wrong? I would want to deal with that problem. How do I get that problem? <laughs> I did tell my husband, I'm like, you can have the disease, please. It's okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Go ahead. You can keep it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, here's here's not a thought. Um Dana mentioned, uh, what about people who expect to be pleased? Mm. I used to give into that. Wow. Was that exhausting? I think it depends on who the person is. Um, you know, and what I I think a lot of times too, we are really good. And my husband and I say this all the time, unless we actually come out and say what those expectations are now, granted, take into consider the relationship. It depends on what the relationship is. Um, but unsaid expectations also cause a ton of dissension and, if you don't get those expectations out, I, I see this all the time, like in um, working relationships is that like, especially when people um, complain about their boss or whatever it is. And it's like, well, what's the expectation? Like, are they giving you an expectation? Do you actually know what it is that they're expecting of you? And if there's not a mutual agreement there. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's like trouble waiting to happen. And so especially like in our marriages, like we have to be able to talk about that stuff and be able to say, Hey, what are you, my husband and I even had that conversation last night, you know, going into the summer and trying to juggle kids and everything that we have going on. And it's like, okay, what, what are our expectations of each other this summer? Because then that way I don't have, there's no hidden agenda. Like he knows what I expect. And if I can't deliver, 
we're going to communicate about that and go, okay, what's an alternative? I think speaking straight to, uh, is it Athena? Yep. Or Ath Athena? Athena. I, uh, I think I can say that I've lost some friendships mm -hmm. um, and I considered the loss before addressing their desire to always be right, always be um, the decision maker, always mm -hmm. be preferred um, in me drawing boundary. I considered the loss. And sometimes, um, now I think if you are with someone who you're assuming desires to be pleased, if their heart is for you, they're going to receive that and go, you know what, I can give, I can compromise, I can meet you halfway. But if a person's heart is not in the right spot, I mean, you are considering a loss. Um, and to me, it's, it's uh, which loss is, is worse me trying to please them. And then right. as a consequence, losing some of my other more important relationships, as you mentioned, Gretchen, or me saying, you know, I, I'm, I cannot put my time into that. I'm sorry that that's your expectation. I just can't bring that to you at this mm -hmm. time and losing that relationship um, right. because they expected that of you. Right. Um, you have to consider the losses and, and no matter what kind of relationship you're in, whether it's authentic or inauthentic, you're going to have loss. <laughs> and to right. me, I'd much rather have loss and authenticity because then there's a soft place to fall. You know, yes. um, I will always hear truth from, from Jen. I will hear truth from you guys. I can, I can, you know, I can come back to you where it's, so if I lose an inauthentic relationship, that's okay. Right. But if all my relationships are like that, oh man, I mean, your loss is going to be massive. significant. Yep. Right. Mm. Including yourself. You're going to totally lose the whole point of your life. Well, and I think that's the disease to please is always trying to be someone that you feel like everybody is expecting to be. That's that Julia Roberts character. In the end, you don't even know who you are. You don't, I mean, you don't know who you are in Christ. You don't know what gifts he's given you. You have no idea what you like. You don't know what your opinions are. You're like this flag that just waves, you know, in the wind, according to whatever directions it, it's blowing. And there's no way that you can believe you have value if you're always saying yes to everybody yeah there's no way you can believe it. you can't have both yeah you can't believe in yourself and and know that god has a purpose for you if you're always saying yes to everybody mm -hmm. dismiss your own story that god's intended to write through your life right yeah right dismissed it because you're you're trying to you know fulfill someone else's right <laughs> demands it goes so yeah. deep no, I, I agree with that, but I must just, to be honest, like for myself, and I'm sure there's other ladies out there and please give me a little shout out. If you are that person, <laughs> I hate to, I hate to say no, mm -hmm. I honestly hate to say no. I hate to oh, say yeah. no to my kids. I hate to say no to my husband. I hate to say no to my friends, even if it's like not even a good friend and they want something or my inauthentic friends. I'm just like, ah, always like the happy, funny one. It's just like, I just hate to say, I just hate to say no. Like, honestly, can't we just say? everything but I'll tell you what like at the end of the day when I'm just feeling drained and exhausted and I have nothing to show for it like I'm not exhausted because I just had like an amazing cry with a good girlfriend about like what's going on in her marriage or something I just you know that's where I'm like okay was it even worth all these yeses that I gave to people you know and it I mean it never is but I'm still like sitting here I still struggle honestly, just myself. And I'm not, and I'm not somebody who doesn't avoid conflict ladies. I'm not a people pleaser. Right. That's my younger sister, but I absolutely still hate to say no. I know Tessa Hopkins, Kelly Hopkins, you know, you love pleasing people. Like literally she just, she just wants to make everybody happy. But me, that's not my thing, but I just, I still hate to say no. It's like, ugh, don't ask me to make a decision. What is it? Like, what is that driving force when you think about saying no to somebody what what's that what's that feeling that comes up like I just don't I guess probably honestly I don't want to disappoint them mm -hmm. and it's not like I even and that's the crazy thing I mean I'm talking even with my kids I'm like disappoint them I'm paying for this house that they're living in I mean right. they have a pool like they have an amazing life like these kids but I still don't want to tell them no and I mean Friday night, I was just beat. I had a super rough work week that literally like my husband comes home, he's tired. So we let them put themselves to bed like three o'clock in the morning. I was like, you know what? They can eat all the candy they want. They can stay up late because they don't want to go to bed. I was like, I'm just done. I went to my own room. I was like, oh, why? Because he's yelling at them. I was like, just leave them. Just don't say no. Like, let's just come hide out together, you know? So 
just that whole idea. And I think in our relationships, it's like, we don't want to disappoint people, even people that don't matter now. Like, because we are so, I feel like if we took a real look at ourselves and I mean, I'm, when I say we ourselves, I'm including me at all of our relationships, just sat down. How many people would you write on a piece of paper that you said, you know what, if I'm really struggling in my marriage, not just like, Oh, things are kind of crazy. He didn't do this. Like you're really struggling. You're just like, how in the world am I going to spend the rest of my life with this guy? Like literally that's the question that's going in your head. Like, I don't even want to like spend any time with him. I definitely don't want to have sex with him. Like however is going in your head, how many people could you like on the piece of paper of your 2000 friends, my 870 friends on Facebook, would I feel comfortable having that conversation with? And that's where you're kind of like, wow, even though like 200 of them I might touch base with or do stuff with, it's like, we've just as a society created this whole fake, let's just keep everybody happy, you know, post the best parts of our life. And, you know, I don't know, like, so it's kind of, it's sad. I mean, that's why I'm glad we're talking with the disease to play is because I'm still sick. I'm still getting recovery. You know, I know that's a really good um, quote that actually you were, you wrote, I don't know if you're looking at that one or the one from work, but I think it comes back to, so the disappointment, Ashley was talking about the loss that you have when you're trying to be somebody that you're not meant to be, um, there's, there's a loss in, I think even in your, uh, a kind of a block you're putting in your relationship with God, even there, right. Dismissing the story he wants to write through your life. Um, but I think we have to get really honest for a second and peel back some layers, which a lot of people don't like to take the time to do it. I like, that's my MO is peel back the layers. Um, but why do you not want to disappoint your kids? Is it because you actually feel sadness for them that they don't get to do what they want to do? Like, oh, I feel sad that they're going to feel sad. Or is it you don't want them to think of you as the mean mom, as the no fun mom, Absolutely. as one saying no? Or is it because it's uncomfortable to deal with their fussiness? And that's all us. It's all about us. I can't say saying no to my kids that they want to go again to, you know, whatever, the water park. And we just went multiple times. And I say, no, my sadness and, or maybe the feeling of like saying no is hard. It's not because I feel bad. You know what I'm saying? Like you should be happy. We went once, you know, like I don't feel sad about their sadness. It's more like, I don't want to be that one that always says no, you know, I don't want to be, you know, it's more, so kids is kind of a hard example, but I think with friends, disappointing friends, do we really feel sad about their disappointment or is it because you feel sad about the reflection of who you might seem be to be to them, you know, the reflection of you um, oh, yeah. in their disappointment. And so I think we got to get real about that is that mm. I do feel like there's a lot of women who want to help and want to serve, but almost as a validation of them being, they've earned Needed. approval, they've earned love, they've mm. earned significance, um, earning, 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 you know, I, I think for the first time I had never thought of it. I was, I was like that good kid that wanted to do everything right with my parents. And it wasn't to make them happy. I wasn't thinking about my mom's going to think she's a great mom now. And my parents are going to be so happy in their marriage when they've got a good kid. That's not what I was thinking. I was thinking if I do what they say, I'm going to feel right. Like I'm in a right position. I've done the right things. I'm a good kid. You know, it was a validation of me. Please them. I feel good about me. You know, um, and I had never thought about that until Jen asked me why I was a people, why I was a parent pleaser. I'm like, I don't know why I was a parent pleaser. <laughs> it was all about me. It's a very so, important to me. Why did you want to please your parents? <laughs> why did you just rebel? I never yeah. had that. If you wanted to just be selfish, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> no. So really it's a me pleaser. Like we're more worried about, it's not the disease to please, about me pleasing, you know? Yeah, it's really, it's it is. So this, um, there's two different things in um, the uh, uninvited by Lisa Turkers, but she talks about, um, we must respect ourselves enough to break the pattern of placing unrealistic expectations on others. After all, people will not respect us more than we respect ourselves. Um, it's not wrong to need people, but some of our biggest disappointments in life are the result of expectations we have of others that can't ever possibly met unrealistic neediness is actually greediness in disguise mm. which I thought was like oh that's a different take on that um 
And on a different note, one of the things when you were talking about um, this disease to please, Reagan, I love this part where she says um, the need to belong, to really being a part of something, the need to belong goes beyond the need for superficial social ties. It's a need for meaningful, profound bonding. A sense of belongingness is crucial to our well being. The lack of belongingness causes various undesirable effects, including um, you know, wanting to please every, everybody and, you know, not That's having right. happiness and not having that health, not having a balance, you know, that kind of thing. So acceptance is like an antibiotic that prevents past rejections from turning into present day infections. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think we got to wrap this up. Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, but that turning into present infections, the rejection, because Ashley said she doesn't want to be misunderstood. She wants people to know her heart that she really does love them. And she doesn't want a no to be misunderstood of her intention. Um, you know, somebody else said it's hard when someone is mad at me, I have a hard time with them feeling those feelings toward me. Um, I think the reality is that fear of being misunderstood, that fear of being rejected. Uh, we have a choice to make either mm -hmm. You cannot live loved and be driven out of fear at the same time. Right. Cannot. They do not exist. In fact, the way that the, the message version of the Bible says is a well-formed love, love banishes fear. So where well-formed love is present, there is no fear. So we do not fear being misunderstood. We do not right. fear being rejected. We don't, do not, we don't fear someone being mad because we don't have to, um, we, we don't own somebody else's response you know we don't own somebody else's feelings mm -hmm. and so there there isn't there isn't that response ability um we have the ability right. to respond to somebody else and and it shouldn't be according to how they feel about something mm -hmm. um and so we have our ability to respond is going to be based on what we will do with past rejection what we will do with past times where we've been misunderstood that will affect how today mm -hmm. we deal. Um, and if we've allowed that to kind of shape us and infect us now, then we're going to obviously handle this disease to please, the comparison trap and any future relationships very differently. But I, I want us to get to a place where we make a decision then to go, I'm gonna live loved or I'm gonna be driven out of fear. Right. You know, And obviously it's not as clear cut as that, but you can choose that and then align actions and thoughts with that or the other, but they can't exist in this thing. Right. I think so good. You guys go ahead, Megan. And I was just going to say, even just the way we do that, honestly, because I mean, I'm telling you, like I'm struggling with these areas is like the more people you surround yourself with. And I mean, this is kind of our, she's velvet steel shout out because even before this, I've still been friends with you guys, but once we kind of got into this community, into this environment and just being real on here, whether we're posting the comments, like, Lindy, I don't even, I haven't even met you face to face, but I'm like, we could sit there together and just like hold each other crying. Like, oh my gosh, why did we say no? Yes. All those things. Like, it's just like, this is where you grow beyond because you need that. Like, it's one thing to know it, but it's another to surround yourself with ladies that are believing it, that are practicing, that are trying it. And so again, I mean, share the site because it's not like everybody you share with that we're getting some special thing and we're feeling good about ourselves. I do like seeing the numbers. Okay. Like, but I'm still struggling. Okay. Don't worry. I'll get the love thing. But this is just how we support each other and be like, Hey, you know what? Did you really mean to say yes to me? You don't have the time to say yes to me. What are you doing? That's a friend that we need. And that's somebody that's like, mm -hmm. You're right. Like, thank you. And you, you really need that. So right. that's my wrap up. Gretchen, you got something? <laughs> Or just clearing I mean, your throat. Yeah, no, like I think I, I just I agree. I think you hit the nail on the head pointedly, Reagan, in that you are the average of the five people that you associate with most. And you know, your community and what you surround yourself with is inevitably gonna rub off on you. And I think you were talking about Jamie, the reflection of like, is that the the disease to please in us saying yes, is that a reflection of how we want people to see us? More than likely, I would say for me, that was, I wanted that reflection to magnify that like, oh, Gretchen's a team player. She's this, she's that versus me taking a hard look in the mirror at my own reflection and go, who is Gretchen Barosio and how has he created me? And if those things aren't aligning, including the relationships in my life, what am I going to do about it to change? Because it starts with me. 
Mm -hmm. It's not Reagan's responsibility to change me. It's not Jen or Jamie's responsibility to change me. It's mine. And you know, nobody on Facebook is going to do it for me. My Instagram followers aren't going to be like, Hey, Gretchen, make sure you're doing X, Y, Z. No, that falls on me. And that is the response that turns into responsibility. That's the response that I had to learn to really nail down and it had to become a lifestyle. It's not easy, but. And that can be a very scary thing. Mm -hmm. That first moment where you go to say no to somebody, um, that can be super scary and you've got to have strength behind you. You've got to have a band of people behind you saying you've got to. Totally. So you guys, we got to wrap it up. This has been awesome. Um, but we're going to, we're going to kind of dive into this a little bit deeper next Monday as well. Um, again, send us your comments. I think we've got a lot of conversation going on on the comments that we want to be able to continue this conversation with you guys, um, next Monday. And, um, and we'll be kind of touching base on it throughout our post this week as well. So share this video. If this is something that you've enjoyed, definitely share the video so that we can get that conversation continuing throughout the, I mean, this conversation that we're having right now can continue in the comments throughout the entire week. Um, that's, you Mm -hmm. know, just being able to go back to that in the week, in the middle of the week and just like, ah, this scenario happened and, um, I thought I was being good. And then, you know, because it's a process, we never arrive. We don't want to ever arrive, but we are in a process. And we're never going to get something licked completely. But if we can be on this journey together and the ultimate is freedom, experiencing freedom to be who you are, to be a friend and a daughter and a wife that God has called you to be to that person, um, that's living in freedom. That's not the bondage of trying to please everybody. So we, we want you to be free of that. So I'm pretty, you good? No, that's good. That was a good like... All right, drop mic. All right, you guys. <laughs> we'll see you guys next Monday. We'll we'll see. You. Let's continue it in the comments and have an awesome week. All right. Bye. Okay, bye. Oh. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.